Yeah. Good evening. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Good evening to the Bethany family and the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good evening to everyone. And want you to, whatever you all say, share, press the yeah. share button. <laughs> Share, yep. start, start a watch party, do whatever you want. A to. watch party. <laughs> <laughs> so once you get in the room, mm -hmm. like, share, all that good stuff. I, absolutely, that's a, that's a language I don't speak. So this is I just listen. <laughs> Yay! Yes. <laughs> I just listen. Good evening. Good. Welcome, Keisha Bryan. Hi, Keisha. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Very good to have you mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. This is our part two of our Power of Habits little series that we're doing. So please mm -hmm. share as you're getting on. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions already, especially after our last discussion, then go ahead and leave them in the comments. You might as well mm -hmm. go ahead on ahead and leave them <laughs> while we're waiting for others to join in. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that last discussion, I think, went really well. I, I really enjoyed did. it. I, I, I really I enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. I yeah. did. I did. And it's those I things did. that you don't you don't think about all mm -hmm. the time because mm -hmm. they're habit. Because they're yeah. habit. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. Like you don't even think about it. The stuff you do every day that's either healthy or unhealthy because it's yeah. a habit. It's you just a do habit. It. Going automatic pilot, and you're like, okay, what just happened? <laughs> oh my gosh, I have a good example of that. I was going, I was take, I usually take the kids to church to do their schoolwork because mm -hmm. um, they're still doing school remotely. So they just go up in the classroom. And um, I yesterday I drove right past the church, like, and <laughs> and the kids were in the back, like, Ur! like, where are we going? I thought we were going to church, and I just kept on, I just kept on driving, like I was going to my office, and so yep. it's like. It's something about things that I've are ingrained that. in you I, subconsciously. That's a habit that you just do yeah. and you, automatically. And sometimes you don't know how you get from point A to point B. Like, yep. okay, you look, you I know I got here. <laughs> Thank God I got here safely. <laughs> but I was on autopilot. Like you're like. I did that one time when Maya was young. I, I forgot to drop off a daycare. I drove to work and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> You're still in the back seat. <laughs> oh, so yeah. So those those habits are powerful. Absolutely. Powerful. Powerful. And if and if you don't pay attention to it before you know it, you don't know. You're just doing all kinds just of things. All kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pastor Grace, good to see you. Hi, Pastor uh, Corey. Hi, Pastor. Hi, Pastor nice, Grace. Nice to have you. you. Hi, Anjanette. Sister Metley, Sister Patricia. Hi. Hi, Sid. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you missed the last one. You can always go back and tune into the last one if you want to catch mm -hmm. up on the uh, the part one of our Power mm -hmm. of Habit series. Mm -hmm. It was a really, really good, really, really good discussion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they have. Uh, Sid said they the new cars have alarms that someone is in the back seat. They need that. Oh, they need that. That's mm -hmm. what they, yeah, they need that. Now I, I didn't. Uh, let me straighten that up. I didn't leave her in the car. <laughs> Because <laughs> they should be like, oh, Sister Labu, you're going to sit down. <laughs> I didn't leave. I just drove to work and and I just want an automatic pilot. I had, I had a meeting to get to. So my brain mm -hmm. was already racing about the meet. And I got to work yeah. and I'm like, oh, I forgot to drop you off. So I had mm -hmm. to go back and drop her back off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But you're right. That sensor is good because, you know, I think we, we, we get so busy. Mm -hmm. um, and so preoccupied with things that we forget. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, I think some parents have just forgotten and just yeah, like, in the car. So, so we don't unfortunate. Do yeah, yeah, do yeah. So are you all ready to jump into this discussion? I'm so honored to have Deacon oh. Andrea Labu with me today as we're talking about our part two of the power of habits. Last mm -hmm. time we did, we had an awesome discussion. We talked about the spiritual perspective mm -hmm. and uh, with Pastor Wendell Jones and um, and we just had uh, an awesome opportunity to dig into how habits form our lives and how to make better choices with mm -hmm. um, some of the things that we all need to correct as far as some unhealthy habits. Yeah. So we're going to uh, get your questions mm -hmm. today and dig in a little bit further. 
um, yeah. into the discussion. Yeah. So yeah. how do we build new habits? So let's talk about that. Cause guess what? As things are winding down in this pandemic. So we think it's yeah, kind of winding so, down. So we, so we think, so we think yeah. it's kind mm-hmm. of winding down. People are going back into what they consider, uh, either a new normal mm-hmm. or what was normal for them before. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the danger of that is some people are so quick to get back to their life that mm-hmm. uh, we might be losing sight of what things we should have been trying to do during this time. Right. So that yeah. I really think we, it's important for us to go into a new normal. And yeah. Ha- yeah. If, if you come out of this without um, really establishing some new yeah. productive habits, then yeah. this season was kind of yeah. a waste for yeah. you. So yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. And I, I was saying yeah. previously in, in one of these sessions or wherever I was talking, mm-hmm. uh, it was almost if God gave, he pressed the Well, in the old days, you had a reset button on a VCR. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he pressed the reset button and gave mm-hmm. us all an opportunity to reset. Mm-hmm. You know, so we, even if we don't come out with something knew it off mm-hmm. it gave us an opportunity to be introspective right. and learn new things about ourselves you know because i i know people are carrying guilt because they didn't write the book they didn't right. do all this great stuff and they're like okay can i just have a few more men- months to mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. everything has a purpose absolutely Every, every everything has a purpose and everything mm-hmm. is so even in this you know mm-hmm. we don't want to fall into the trap of saying i didn't do something feel mm-hmm. bad about myself and develop a negative habit right exactly yeah. mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. and i think you're bringing up a good point about the difference between goals and habits right yeah. so a lot of people when the pandemic first hit they were really like i now i can start working on my goals Right. Mm-hmm. But in order to be successful in meeting any goal, you have to have healthy habits mm-hmm. because in order to in order to get to the end, you mm-hmm. have to be consistent with something mm-hmm. that is productive. And mm-hmm. a lot of us have big dreams, big goals, things that we want to accomplish. But the discipline to get that is what is required. And some mm-hmm. of us, we just want to get there, We're, especially with yeah. the social media generation. Like, how do I get that? You know, yeah. just tell me, just tell me what to do to get that, right? How do I get what she got? Yeah. Right? Skip the work and the Skip process, the work, right? Just give me the product. That's all, right? <laughs> but the habit is, is all of the work and the steps that it takes that you have to do consistently in order to meet that goal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, some of us have to be more disciplined and take the time necessary to really invest in ourselves. And this season gave us an opportunity to do to do that, yeah. to really take a step back and make some investments into ourselves to recognize what we need to work on as far as our physical health, our emotional health, yeah, and all of that so that I don't get the goal and then sabotage it. Because that's what happens a lot of times. Okay, I'm here, but I didn't do the necessary work to know how to maintain it now that I'm here. Right, right. And that's and a I, dangerous I, place to be. It is very dangerous. And, and I think it goes back to how we started the discussion is mm-hmm. first not being on automatic pilot, you mm-hmm. know, because once you take yourself off automatic, you begin to think and feel differently, you know, right. which is, a, it can be a good thing, but an, a not so feel good thing because mm-hmm. it can force us to feel things that we didn't want to feel right. and, or, or experience things that we didn't want to experience or just face things in our own lives that we just didn't want to. So sometimes that automatic pilot habit habitual thing is a protective thing mm-hmm. you know, it can be protective you know Absolutely. and 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 we've said this before it's it's you can't change what you don't acknowledge mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. have to you have to acknowledge the, the the positive habits and the not so positive habits and those mm-hmm. in between and those in between you know mm-hmm. Yep, you know. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I, one thing that um, I've been sharing with my clients a lot uh, lately, too, is how to manage disappointment, right? Uh, when you're working towards some things and it does, doesn't seem to be working out the way mm-hmm. that you thought it was going to work out. Yeah. And we talk about how that disappointment leads to discouragement. And you yep. feel like that was the point of me putting in all of this work for something that just doesn't mm-hmm. seem to be getting me anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And how that discouragement brings up disillusionment. So the Mm -hmm. way that I would describe disillusionment is like that feeling that kids have when they first find out there's no Santa, 
right? <laughs> Wait, it's you like, mean there's no Santa? No, no. <laughs> you mean to tell me all this time that I thought these gifts that were dropped on my lap came from this fat jolly man that, that could get around the world in one night? And you mean to tell me all the time it was my mama that was bringing the gifts over to the house? <laughs> it's like a wake up call that everything that you thought the world was is not yeah. as it appeared to be. Right. And And then you have to realize that, oh, I thought that to get there, all I had to do was this. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when you realize it takes more work than you thought, some people are really ready to quit. Right. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it well, brings up. Well, I think I think what happens in a, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. You know, but I, I think it brings up those because I'm going to finish your sentence. Yeah, go ahead. It brings up those feelings of inadequacies. Yes. Sister. <laughs> it, and, and those inadequacies are sometimes very difficult to face. Right. And all that's connected to disappointment, you know, mm -hmm. and ultimately what I end up being disappointed in, I end up being disappointed in myself. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And it's fun. I was having a conversation with a young lady today that, you know, we all experience that. You know, we always we we all experience that. We we're always we're not verbal about it though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't share when we feel disappointed in ourselves, and and, mm -hmm. and sometimes the spiral that can put us in. Absolutely, because it can put you in a spiral, and and uh, faith will ground you and mm -hmm. pull you out, and then sometimes friends have to pull you out. Right. But it, it can it can lead in a very negative. <laughs> I'm sorry, my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> That's, That's my right. House, we all okay? family. We family. That's my house. Okay. <laughs> but you know, it, it. We have to be aware that first of all, we all go through this. Yes. We all go through disappointments. You know, we all go through those things of what we feel missing the mark, and we feel like mm -hmm. we haven't accomplished what we what we want to accomplish, and then we start comparing ourselves. And then once again, some of those positive and negative habits start coming out because then you throw up your hands and go, why bother? Why bother? Why bother? Mm -hmm. Why, why mm -hmm. bother? So yep. yeah, I want to be encouraging to people that if you feel that, A, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And B, there, there, there's a way out of it. There, there's a right. way out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're right. It's something that all of us, all of us experience. And, and you and you know, people like this that um, that you hear all the time who have reached that point of just being like, you know what? It's fine. Like it didn't work out for me. And they start showing that they're giving up. Think about mm -hmm. it. All of the coworkers who you might ask, what happened to you or your photography? Uh, right. Like I, I used to do that. But then I got married. I had the kids mm -hmm. and I kind of just moved on. I didn't have the time anymore. And mm -hmm. what happened? you going back to school? Oh, child, I can't do that now. Like, I'm too old. Yeah. And people start to, like, give up on those goals yeah. because they got discouraged. Somewhere along the line, they yeah. realize, maybe this is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Or it didn't happen at the time I thought it was supposed to happen. And, mm -hmm. and then we get discouraged, right? Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of people, too, start to feel um, the sadness and the anxiety, you know, a lot of depression and the depression and anxiety stem from that, the feelings of inadequacy or being overwhelmed or worrying about the future and worrying mm -hmm. about things that they can't control and then mm -hmm. overthinking things that have happened in their history and thinking that that somehow is going to disrupt my ability to do mm -hmm. what I want to do. Right. You know, and you mm -hmm. spoke a lot about that, Sister Blue. I think mm -hmm. we did last time too about mm -hmm. how our histories play mm -hmm. such a big role, mm -hmm. and how our parents, yep. you know, may have had p played a role in us feeling a lot of mm -hmm. that discouragement about our mm -hmm. own future. Mm -hmm. And and that's that that's that stuff that we don't know we do. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know why why am I having a reaction to this because mm -hmm. somebody's wearing the color pink? You know what's happening? Mm -hmm. You know yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and that's what I think, you know, we've had the opportunity to do is be introspective about those type of things mm -hmm. and really start to learn what our imprints are. This is not yeah. an opportunity to blame those who've imprinted us, mm -hmm. but to take responsibility for the imprint and, and either moving it one way or the other. You know, mm -hmm. one thing that I personally had to learn is that just because you're on a different path, it doesn't mean it's the wrong path. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just a different way of getting to a destination, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. and that and, and life does that to us. Mm -hmm. you know? like you said, 
you got kids, things happen, the money flow one time is not flowing in. So things happen, things happen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, just going back to your point about developing healthy habits, you know, it's work to do that. Mm -hmm. It's work. It's it is work to do that. You know, it mm -hmm. takes time to develop a healthy habit. It takes time to really, and here's the key, what I think the key, invest in yourself enough Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to follow through with a habit that you don't want to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I saw Sid's comment too, you know, and I think this season is showing a lot of us that some of the things we expected to happen during this time when it seems like money is not where it should be and the yes. job situation changes suddenly, then we feel like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> Everything that I've been working hard for seems to yeah. be in somebody else's control. Right. Yeah. And then we start to lose um, our kind of our footing a little bit, we mm -hmm. start to become undone and, and have a lot of anxiety about, now what do I do when I feel mm -hmm. like everything that I'm working towards and all the effort that I'm putting into maintaining my finances, to taking care of my family, to working hard on the job, is snatched up from underneath me. You know, mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. a really, really hard place for I think a lot of us to be in. And this season has revealed that, that there's a lot of things that are not in our control. Mm -hmm. That's when it's so important to put your, our trust in God. And also remember that small change is change. So anything mm -hmm. that you can do to work towards rebuilding or mm -hmm. reestablishing and being flexible will take you a long way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of us have to learn to be flexible, especially yeah. right now. Be flexible with yeah. the timing and how things mm -hmm. are evolving because it's new for all of us. Right. Yeah. It's new. Yeah. And, and I think that's, and I love that small changes still change. I love that. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we, we don't give ourselves credit. Right. We don't give ourselves credit. And, you know, and I, I know in terms of dealing with clients and counseling, and I'm sure you've had this experience, you know, you know, sometimes if a person's really at a low point in their lives, it's an accomplishment just to get out of bed that day. Right. Show yourself some grace. Show yourself some grace. Mm -hmm. You know, get out of the bed the next day. Mm -hmm. Get out of the bed and wash up the next day. Mm -hmm. Get out of the bed, wash up, and go for a walk the next day. Right. You know, but we don't show ourselves grace. So I'm going mm -hmm. to echo what you said. Small change is still change, and acknowledge right. that change. Absolutely. That. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that what and if there's anything positive that's come out of this whole pandemic has been the creativity that's happened, and I've seen mm -hmm. such resourcefulness in people, people who've had businesses, you know, they, you know, who, they've shut down, but they've it totally redesigned the business right. and they're more, and they're more successful now than ever. Mm -hmm. than ever. And then mm -hmm. ever. So I, I think we have to, I guess, going back to what you were saying earlier, we have to not be afraid to break out of the box for lack of a better word, or break mm -hmm. out of the pattern that I set for myself. Mm -hmm. I had this, I had this idea and concept of what my life was going to be like. Okay, mm -hmm. this is just not where it is right now. Does it mean I stop? I move forward and develop a new vision. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, I see that so much. Even um, especially like women when we get of a certain age and we haven't been married and we haven't had children yet, mm -hmm. and uh, or we haven't graduated at the time mm -hmm. we were supposed to graduate or or developed a business at the time we mm -hmm. thought we were going to do it. Uh, we start to fall, succumb to the pressure of other people's perception of where we should mm -hmm. be at a certain time or society stigma that, oh, you're 40 and you haven't had kids yet? Or mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're not married and like mm -hmm. everybody gives you the look like, yeah, what's wrong know? with you? <laughs> you know, like, and, and we start to, you know, like succumb to that feeling of it, mm -hmm. of inadequacy, mm -hmm. right? Like you yeah. said, of some, well, maybe something is wrong with me, you know, mm -hmm. why am I behind the eight ball? And everybody else has done it at this time and I'm so late and I haven't accomplished mm -hmm. that yet. But everybody's timing is different. We all have different things that we go through in life. Mm -hmm different experiences. We come from different paths. So mm -hmm. run the lane that is set before you. Yep. And if, <laughs> and run the lane set before you. Stay in your lane. If yeah. this is the timing that got in the path that God has you mm -hmm. on, then enjoy mm -hmm. the ride. That's the best I can say, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, that's enjoy true. Enjoy the ride. Yep, yep. And, and, and just add, and find joy in that. You know, sometimes, you know, we get and I'll speak for myself, you, you, we get so familiar with uh, what we do all the time, it becomes comfortable. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which means it becomes sort of not exciting anymore because mm -hmm. just, I do it every day. It's just nothing here. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the unknown can be exciting. Yeah. The, the challenge of the unknown can be exciting. You know, mm -hmm. it can be scary, but you can turn that into a learning experience. You can turn mm -hmm. that into, okay, this is an opportunity for me to grow in a way that I've never imagined I would have to grow in. Absolutely. You know? And when we start comparing ourselves to other people, and, and let's be honest, I think we all do that. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. I'm, we all we all do it from time to time. And I'll go, you know, sit next to a car. I'm like, oh, I want that car. <laughs> so, oh, my dream car. <laughs> my dream car. <laughs> it's okay. But it's but you know what? Stay in your lane, just to echo mm -hmm. what you said. Stay in the lane that God has prepared for you. Mm -hmm. and, and and go back to trust the process. Mm -hmm. yep. the process. And um, I see Dana. <laughs> so, like, good example is because we're doing the sugar detox. I, how many of you are doing the sugar detox, right? Are you doing it? <laughs> so, we're doing the sugar I detox. <laughs> And like the struggle is super real. So it like super duper real. If you've never done it before, it is like such a change from the yeah. norm and the habits yeah. that we're used to, like checking labels, checking ingredients yeah. and and what we used to just like or what we're used to consuming. Now yeah. we have to develop a new habit of, oh, let me be mindful yeah. uh, and re yeah. retrain my brain to think differently about mm. the foods I'm eating, and how much mm. and what yeah. I'm putting in my body. Right. Um, right. When and we did, go, no, go, go. No, no, you go. Mm. No, I was gonna say when we did it the last time, um, I had been so speaking of like habits, right? So I am, a, I was a sugar addict. All right, so let's just say, let me just I'll put it out there, everybody. Okay, <laughs> about this. Okay, Conf I was a, confession. Confession is good <laughs> for the soul. <laughs> I was addicted to candy corn and circus peanuts. Okay, now let me tell you how bad it was. Okay, y'all gonna laugh. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you how bad. Let me say how bad of a habit this was. That so Pastor Nick be like, stop eating all that sugar, okay? So I would buy a bag of candy corn, but I would leave it in my car. So yeah, then I would eat it in the car, and then I would <laughs> then I would go in the house. Now this is how bad it was. So I would go in the house. I'm like, hey babe, it'd be in my car. So mm -hmm. then I would have my slippers on. Night night. My kids call it night night clothes, right? I have my night night, -night, -night, -night clothes on. <laughs> And he'd be at church and I'd be like sitting at the house like mm, mm, Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a hundred, it could be, it could be below zero outside. I would be like zip up my coat on, be like, you know, <laughs> in the snow to go in the car, grab, put some on my hand and put yep. it in my coat pocket. <laughs> go, back <in> the house. <laughs> go back in the house, right? So, but what had happened is because I had this sugar habit with sugar, yeah. Um, I noticed that I was in a brain fog and I was yep. having some physical symptoms and I had a little yeah. bit of a scare where my hemoglobin mm. levels were off. Oh, okay. okay. And um, I had to see a hematologist mm -hmm. and they had to run blood work. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was like, oh my God, what have I done to my body? Yeah. Right. And yeah. um. So I was in all kind of pain. I was forgetful mm -hmm. and I was tired all the time. And my uh, nutritionist said, girl, it is your diet. You are malnourished. Wow. And I said, what do you mean malnourished? And she wow. says, nothing you put in your body is feeding oh. your body. Wow. And I had messed up my thyroid. I had oh, messed wow. up yeah. all kinds of or vital organs in my body mm -hmm. from sugar, y'all, sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I had did the detox the first time. And she gave us, um, she let us know what our tell was, which is how you can tell your body, how your body mm -hmm. responds to sugar. So she put a little, after we did the sugar detox, she put a little piece of ginger candy on my tongue and I thought I was going to faint. Really? Wow. Like wow. she came back, she let me, she said, sit in a chair, don't move. And she said, just put it on your tongue. I put it on my tongue. She walked back and I was like, wow. She was like. So she asked me, who in your family has type two diabetes? <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> wow. And wow. I said, a bunch of people on bunch my dad's side. Yeah. And she says, you just added 20 years to your life oh, by doing the sugar that. detox. Wow. wow. So wow. habits are so important. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and you didn't realize that until, no. until you went through it. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and so... 
we don't know the, how do I put this, the level or the size or the importance of that habit in our life until mm-hmm. we do something different. Mm-hmm. Right. You didn't know that. Wow, that's yep. amazing. That's yep. amazing. So, so yes, the struggle is real. The struggle is, is, real. It is real. It is, it is real. real. But some of those some of those new habits that we have to develop are absolutely necessary, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they require um, if we could give some tools. One thing that may be required is a change in our environment. Right. Change in environment. So uh, for those that are doing a sugar detox, like Mm -hmm. it might mean removing some things out (laughs) of the house, pack the cookies up. (laughs) Take the licorice and put it somewhere Take else. The, liquor, the the Swedish fish, the candy, the candy corn, the chips. Move it out, right? Move it out. Yep. You know, it yep. may mean changing your environment. Like for those that are really battling with sadness and depression, it may mm-hmm. mean opening up the windows. Yeah. You know, let the air in, turn the lights mm-hmm. on, stop sitting mm-hmm. in the dark, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, give, give yourself um, a change in the atmosphere to help mm-hmm. play different music. Right. Like, listen to worship music, yeah. Yeah. open up your Bible, turn on a sermon, you know, yeah. turn the yeah. lights on. Yeah. And you try, know, try, try something different. You know, I keep and I see Charlotte has a question that I want us to get mm-hmm. to about disappointment. But I keep a, a poem in my in my office and it's, it's basically about um, a hole in the sidewalk. It's, it's just called a hole in my sidewalk. And it's about a person who keeps walking down the same sidewalk and fall into the same hole, mm. same hole. And they mm-hmm. cannot figure it out. Why do I keep falling to the same hole? Until you change direction or go down a different sidewalk, you're going to fall into the same hole. Right. Mm-hmm. And you'll be and you'll be free from that habit. But mm-hmm. it takes it takes effort to do that. And Absolutely. I and I go and I go back to that. It takes an investment in ourselves. We mm-hmm. have to, if, if I don't feel worthy enough for the investment, then I probably won't be successful in making that investment. Mm-hmm. We, we invest in everything and everybody else, but we don't invest in ourselves sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, let, we let life happen to us instead of us happening to our lives. Right. So, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Does, does somebody have a question you saw? I saw, yeah. I saw Charlotte says something. Glad you mentioned. Okay, there it is. Oh, okay. Glad you mentioned managing disappointment. What steps would you recommend to manage disappointment? Okay. So I'm going to, I'm, I know this sounds really like simple and cliche, right? But one way to manage disappointment, one of the best ways is gratitude. I know it sounds like one, like all that y'all talked about and you're going <laughs> to say gratitude, like to manage this. But let me tell you why. OK, because gratitude is the first step to being intentional, mm-hmm. being intentional about thinking differently. So when you're really caught in this negative cycle of disappointing and discouraging thoughts, you have to start with thinking differently, like reframe those negative thoughts into something more useful. So whenever I have people say, I'm just such an overthinker, like I think a lot, I I just wish I wasn't such an overthinker. Mm -hmm. I tell them, we are thinkers, that's humanity. Like as humans, we are supposed Mm -hmm. to be thinkers. The problem is not whether or not you're an overthinker. The problem is whether or not those thoughts are useful. Mm-hmm. So if the thoughts are not useful and productive, then it's just going to spire you out of control. So mm-hmm. if your thoughts are leading you into uh, negative uh, relationships and negative habits, then they're not useful. But if your thoughts are leading you toward productivity and encouragement and ideas, then those thoughts are useful. So gratitude is one of those ways to trick your mind out of this negative cycle of just focusing Mm -hmm. on the negative, right? Mm -hmm. So point out things, and that's part of showing yourself grace, pull out the things that you are uh, really doing well, right? And have a gratitude list because that would be really, really helpful in managing some of that disappointment. So being intentional, oh, you can't hear me? You can, okay. I can hear (laughs) you. So being, okay, (laughs) being intentional, and showing gratitude, right, mm-hmm. will be uh, one of the best steps to start taking to manage some of those yeah. disappointments and also acknowledgement. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I was going to say. I think acknowledgement is important, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I echo what you said. We, we, we sometimes make 
things in life very complicated, uh -huh. you know, and, and, and starting a gratitude journal, just being thankful for one thing every day. Uh -huh. What you're doing is you're replacing that negative thought with something positive, you know, uh -huh. and I say force it or fake it until you make it, you know, you yeah. may not, you may not feel it, but eventually uh -huh. if you continue to repeat yourself, you know, I have what I need. God will provide uh -huh. for me. I have, what, you know, continually be thankful for the things around us uh -huh. that some people don't have. Yeah. Some, and I, I am that, I'm that person. I'm like, Jesus, I thank you for my pillow and my sheet <laughs> <laughs> and my blanket. <laughs> Because it, it is such a sense of gratitude because I work with so many who don't have. Right. Who don't, yeah. who don't have the luxury of a sheet and a pillow mm -hmm. and a place to lay there. So I don't take it for granted. So changing mm -hmm. that negative or changing that disappointment into, into something that you're thankful for and, and, mm -hmm. and, and you have gratitude for. And mm -hmm. then going back to the other point is figuring out the, the, the source of the disappointment. Right. Exactly. Um, are we disappointed in the person, the place or thing? Are we uh -huh. disappointed in ourselves for allowing that person, place or thing to get to us and us right. affect us that way? Uh -huh. So it, it, it becomes a, a an opportunity for once again introspection. You right. Know, and figure out why am I really disappointed about this? You know, mm -hmm. what, what, what is this saying about me? You know, they mm -hmm. didn't invite me to go here. You know, are my feelings hurt because of this or my feelings hurt because I really didn't want to go? Whatever. But it, mm -hmm. it, 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 it takes it takes thought. It takes thought. The most powerful muscle we have is the mind. Mm -hmm. that, that is the most, and, and the enemy knows that. And the enemy, mm -hmm. and the enemy, the enemy knows once I can start tricking you into that disappointment loop and you start feeling bad and you're like, you know, I should have done this. Start second guessing yourself. Once again, we go start going for that spiral. We, mm -hmm. start, we, we start spiraling again. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. will echo what you said in terms of dealing with disappointments, you replace the disappointment with gratitude, um, mm -hmm. figure out the source of the disappointment, disappointment. and, mm -hmm. and then, and then, and then move through it, mm -hmm. move, move, mm -hmm. move through the disappointment. Mm -hmm. And that takes practice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes when we're disappointed, it's, it's so easy to stay stuck in that thought. Right. But we do have to sometimes practice doing something differently. And that's a part of positive habits is, um, it's easier to be negative than it is to be positive, right? It takes more energy to think yourself out of a sunken place than it is mm -hmm. to just sit and wallow in self-pity and be um, and struggle with some of our negative thoughts, right? That's a little bit easier, actually, because it takes mm -hmm. no work to be neg negative Nancy, right? But to be grateful takes a lot of intention. It takes practice. It takes yeah. consistency of refuting those thoughts. And sometimes, let's be honest, that can be exhausting yeah. oh my right god is exhausting <laughs> it can be exhausting to, it can be exhausting to think negatively but sometimes it's hard mm -hmm. to always be the positive person too mm -hmm. but yeah. it's important to really mm -hmm. train yourself out of that negative thinking right mm -hmm. i remember my sister went to um when we were kids she went to africa she was in sierra leone and i forget mm -hmm. a couple of the other places that she went and she was there for two to three weeks and we were she was we were kids at the time that she went, she came home and she's just like, toilet paper. Oh my God. It was so good. <laughs> and she was like real, she was like real syrup. And she was like, just like, I was like, what? And she was like, there was no toilet paper. And she was like, there's no toilet. There's no toilet paper. And, yeah. and I was just like, wow. Yeah. But the things that like a 12 year old came back you know, mm -hmm. grateful for it, it just mm -hmm. brings things into perspective that some of the mm -hmm. things that we are disappointed about and complain mm -hmm. about, there are people so much worse off and just, you know, showing gratitude and gratefulness for the small things that we yeah. have That's takes right. us a long way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and that becomes a habit. And like you said, that becomes a habit of mm -hmm. being grateful and mm -hmm. attitude. So you can mm -hmm. develop that just as you develop the negative thinking, you develop that positive thinking with practice. Mm -hmm. and, and, and honest, sometimes, you know, I've, I've been at certain points in my life, I actually had to write things down. And I yeah. that, okay, this is what I'm thankful for today, you know, mm -hmm. and, and write them out um, mm -hmm. and, and and reflect and say, okay, well, you know, maybe my life is not as bad as I thought it is. Mm -hmm. look, look, look at 
all the all good these stuff great things. Mm-hmm. Look at all the good stuff I have going mm-hmm. on. Absolutely, mm-hmm. which is forming a new habit and forming right. a different a different way of looking at life. It really is. Yeah. And um, another thing that we can do when we're talking about establishing new habits is tell someone you trust about what you're trying to do that can hold you accountable. Right. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times a lot of us are finisher, uh, good starters, but not good finishers. And, um, you know, we have great ideas, but we don't complete complete any of them. I saw. Pastor Nick and Maya were doing the uh, live on Monday for Maximize mm-hmm. Monday. And Pastor Nick said, I need to finish my book. I think it was yeah. something he said. Mm-hmm. And Maya told him, put a date on it. And he said, yeah. you're right. I need to do that. So yeah. sometimes just sharing with someone what you're doing and having someone mm-hmm. to keep you accountable to tell yeah. someone. And that way they can hold you to the fire and say, mm-hmm. did you finish it yet? Did you do it yet? Mm-hmm. Get on it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> get on it. Get on it. You yeah. said you were going to do this last year. Let's yeah. do it. Put a date yeah. on it. Right. Yep. Let's ha- let's see what you can do in by th- in thirty days. Mm-hmm. Come back mm-hmm. to me and, and tell me what you've accomplished in sixty days. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and that helps you mm-hmm. keep yourself grounded and accountable. Mm-hmm. And, keep and doing and it and pick an accountability partner that can handle you when you when you get angry with them. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're going to want to tell them, mind your business. <laughs> like, stop asking me. I said I was going to do it. I didn't ask for, I didn't ask for all this. <laughs> but that's the person who's going to lovingly encourage you. You know, Right. And mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know. I get uncomfortable. And it took me a minute to figure this out about myself. Mm-hmm. I, I get uncomfortable when I'm not completing something. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, it, I, it doesn't feel good for me. I, I have, I always have like nine bazillion things happening at one time, and sometimes it can mm-hmm. get overwhelming. I'm like, okay, right. I'm. Un- and my will tell you, I will say, I'm uncomfortable because I'm not finishing anything. I mean, mm-hmm. So, so, and then when you finish, you go, oh, it's like a sense yeah. of relief. yes, like a, a sense of relief and an accomplishment. Okay, good, I did it. I did mm-hmm. it. And, you know, and one of the habits I have is that generally every night before I go to bed, I make a list of things to do. Yeah. Part because I need to remember, but it Mm -hmm. also because I realize about that myself, I like to accomplish things and finish things. It's Mm -hmm. a sense of if I put 10 things on the list and I only get to four. Guess what? Mm -hmm. I can cross those four things off and say, look, look at Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) So you have to find, first of all, when we talked about dealing with disappointment and de- de- uh, developing healthy habits, you have to find what works for you. You mm-hmm. know, making a list for me makes me feel like I'm accomplishing something. Find, mm-hmm. wh- figure out who you are and put that practice and put that habit into place. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That was going to be, I, to um, piggyback off of that, that was going to be one of my um other things on our list is just tracking. And that was, um, and you just said it, right? Tracking your habits and making sure that you have something there to let you know what you've actually done. Because a lot of say, oh, I'm doing better, but how do you know? Mm-hmm. How do you know? There's nothing to reference to tell you that you've made any strides, right? Mm-hmm. Unless you have something written down or something that says I've accomplished this, right? So make it, maybe making a list is an important, and if you're struggling with a list, what can you do that shows what you've accomplished? Right. Setting a date, setting a deadline of, mm-hmm. of this is what I want to have done by this time, mm-hmm. by next year, I want to have blah, 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 blah right? Mm-hmm. So that you know. Like I remember when we were opening up the daycare center for the church, mm-hmm. I had no idea what I was doing, right? <laughs> like none, none, none. So I had to keep be very structured because now you're dealing with the state and children of what I needed to have done by when, yeah. right? So it was like, okay, let me go line by line and read every single single word on this documentation that they're t- sending me. First, I'll do the life hazard certificate, then I'll yeah. do this, this, and then I'll do that. Yeah. And little by little, yeah. I was chipping away at it to the next thing yeah. you know, I had the keys. Like there you go. Wow. and the and the license and yep. and the state is coming out and approving yeah. and it's like how did yeah. I get there right? right from doing step by step by step yeah. Yeah. and so we have to hi Georgiana um, mm-hmm. we have to find some way to keep ourselves accountable and tracking mm-hmm. our progress mm-hmm. when we're talking about establishing new habits is so important yeah. right and, and I think that accountability also comes with accomplishment. 
Mm -hmm. you know? it, 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 there is a sense of, like I said, if I, I put 10 things on my list, I did four, that's a sense of accomplishment for me that will encourage me to keep going. Mm -hmm. you know? And going back to what you talked about earlier, we've become what I call a microwave um, society. You know, mm -hmm. I want it fast, quick, and in a hurry. I want to press mm -hmm. a button and have a seven course meal in seven minutes. <laughs> okay. You know, so we want our lives to, to, to be that way as well, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but it takes hard work. It takes discipline it you does. Know? It, and it takes failure sometimes. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> It takes mm. failure sometimes. So it's not the failure that's the issue. It's how we deal with failure becomes the issue. Uh, so I feel like we need to talk about that a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Let's stay on that. Stay on that one for just a little uh, while. No. <laughs> failure is so hard. It's yeah. just so hard, when you, especially when you've worked hard yeah. for something or you're already kind of second guessing yourself and things are not working out yeah. the way that you thought. There's a lot of things that um, um, that we have to consider when failure happens, right? Yeah. Is a lot of us question, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this then. But no, that doesn't mean that at all. You know, sometimes failure is just a learning curve. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a learning curve to teach us what to do differently the next time. And we should learn from them, Absolutely, you know, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. and not and get learn. discouraged. And I'm going to say, I was going to echo and, and not get discouraged mm -hmm. um, and stay, you know, I think I may have shared this with you before. I have a, a friend who is a, a, well, my sister's, a, a friend whose sister is like a multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. And I was over her house at one point and I saw this like stack of business cards. I'm like, boy, that's a lot of people, you know. So I, so I asked, I said, what are those cards? She said, those are all the businesses I started and failed. Wow. She said, and I keep them as a reminder for me that you cannot wow. give up. You cannot wow. give up. Yep. 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 She did balloons. She did flowers. She did. She hit tires and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> And she became a multimillionaire for tires and selling tires and distributing tires and things like wow. that. Wow. But what she realized about herself is that she was an entrepreneur. Right. She was, she liked, she was that, that's who she was as a person. Mm -hmm. Now, whether she sold chicken or she sold balloons, she, she was just wanted to do it on her own. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. don't get upset if that one business card doesn't work. Just keep on getting another business card. Yep. And um, you watched the Food That Built America. Oh, um, that's my favorite. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Bill and Hersey, like, to hear his story and how maniacal yeah, people yeah. that are successful are about yep. not yeah. letting the failures stop yeah. them. Okay. And when you want to be successful, you have to be habitual about yep. doing what it is that you love, regardless mm -hmm. of how many setbacks you have. And mm -hmm. some people are just built from a different cloth. They, they can fail, 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 and just like, try again, try again, try again, keep going. And some of us are too quick and eager to give up. We were right. looking for a reason mm -hmm. to give up. But to be successful at anything, I don't care if it's your weight loss journey, your business, your book, your podcast, mm -hmm. whatever it is, you have to be. You have to keep going. Absolutely. There will be failures. Absolutely. I mean, I watched that thing and I was like, Jesus. I love that show. I do. I love that show. It just teaches was, that lesson. Yep. It, it teaches really that does. Lesson. You can't stop. You, you can't stop. And you can't internalize it. You can't oh, say, oh, it's, I, it's me. I did something wrong. Okay. Well, you, here's the thing. You take every failure as a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tend to be of that mindset, you know, good and bad come to us for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they are become life lessons that mold us and who we support, who God Absolutely. wants us to be. Mm -hmm. And until we get those messages and we get those lessons, those lessons will come back to us. Mm -hmm. So even in a failure, what are you learning from this failure? It could mm -hmm. be just how you, you learn how to deal with failure. Mm -hmm. you know, it could be just that simple. Mm -hmm. So there are, I think Bishop said this one, there are no lost tears. There, nothing is lost. Nothing mm -hmm. is finite. It is just a, a, a 
stone to your next opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It can either be a stumbling block or a stepping yeah. stone. Absolutely. And we have to we have to make it a stepping stone. Like, okay, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. failed, I messed up. What have I learned mm-hmm. from that? And how can mm-hmm. I use that to take the next step forward? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you do, you're so right, Sister Libra, you cannot mm-hmm. internalize it. And a lot of us do. We take it as something that's wrong with me. I see, yeah. I can't do it. I knew I yeah. couldn't do it. Um, you and my son, you know, when uh, mm-hmm. when they're doing kids, they do this a lot when they're doing their schoolwork or when they're trying. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, you know, like like try again. I can't. I tried already. I can't do it. <laughs> Wait, I'm having a flashback just having you talk about it. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm like, stop crying. I can't right. do it. And they think that something is um, wrong with them, right? Yeah. And they yeah. take it so personally when yeah. they try something and yeah. it doesn't yeah. work out. For them. Yeah, and, and I've learned to ask a child a question: Why do you think you can't do it? Yeah, mm-hmm. I just don't know. Okay, then that's what we need to figure out because mm-hmm. and you will run that tape in your head: I can't, I can't, I can't, mm-hmm. and and that will be the imprint, mm-hmm. and never never quite figure out why that why do I feel like I can't? You know. Mm-hmm. It, where did that come from? Where did that and come then, from? W- and where did that come from? And we mm-hmm. all, you know, our parents do and did the best that they could, mm-hmm. you know, and, and using your example of the Santa Claus, you know, mm-hmm. there's that moment that you realize, oh, your parent is just human. Yeah, they're <laughs> just human. They're wow, just wow. human. <laughs> Why not, Mom? Well, whatever. I thought they were heroes. Oh, I thought they were superheroes. I thought my dad was awesome, like Thor. And you're like, he's just a man. He's just a, man. <laughs> a boring old man. <laughs> well, not your father. <laughs> <laughs> No, not my daddy. <laughs> not your dad. But we have we have that moment, you know, whether it comes in our adulthood or when we're late teens, whenever we come we come to that moment in our lives that our parents were just human. Right. And mm-hmm. doing the best they could with what they were given. So when we have an opportunity with our children to reshape and, and mold and go back and maybe correct some things that we inherited or get to that question, why do you think you can't? Right. And, you know, it, it might be because I feel I'm stupid. OK, well, mm-hmm. let's think. Let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. And then as a parent, you have a, a little little cheat sheet that says, okay, Mm -hmm. my child is thinking that they're not, they're not smart. So Mm -hmm. I have to do things to build up their Mm self-esteem. You know, I had, I have to set up different things for them to make them feel good. You know, Mm -hmm. I, I have a child who shall not be named (laughs) (laughs) because she's watching me right now. (laughs) Was, Was challenged in math. Okay. Mm-hmm. I Me too. So I'll put it out there. <laughs> but you know, but but in a different way, you know, mm-hmm. I would be sitting at the table, you know, I was that parent with the fruit loops, you know, add the green fruit loops to mm-hmm. the red fruit loops. <laughs> what do you get? And she goes, mm-hmm. Oh mommy, that looks like a horse. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing that right We're now. Talking about that. <laughs> But I had to realize, you know, she sees things in a different way because she, she, the simple stuff may not get, but give her a long chemical equation, Mm -hmm. something with physics or something Mm -hmm. like that. And you sit there and go, okay, how did you get that? I'm I'm, I'm a, I'm a tell on her right now. She was probably a junior in high school or something like that. She's on the exercise bike. You know, I I hope Mm -hmm. I didn't tell the story already. She's on the exercise, little black and white composition book. And she's mm-hmm. on the exercise bike, just um, and she's doing. I'm like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. I'm ca- I'm calculating the amount of energy I'm using on the exercise bike. She's doing <laughs> physics. Oh my <laughs> lord! Okay, <laughs> but but can't add the Fruit Loops. <laughs> <laughs> so I I say that because children will often give us a snapshot of the messages they're receiving and they may not be messages that they're receiving from home. Mm -hmm. They may be messages that they are putting on themselves by comparing themselves to other kids Absolutely, and saying, you know, well, this girl always gets it and I'm, I don't. So that means I'm stupid. Mm -hmm. So when you ask that child, that question, you know, Mm -hmm. why can't you do it? Why do you Mm -hmm. say you can't do it? Mm -hmm. Allow them the freedom to speak from their heart. 
Mm -hmm. I allowed them the freedom to say, because I feel a certain way. So the goal is to deal with the feeling Absolutely. and not and not the statement behind. I, mean, I feel like that's a circle going a long way around. No, that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. and, you, and you're so right. And the children, I think, too, they're so when they're really little, they're used to parents doing everything for them. Mm -hmm. And then when they reach a point where they have to do more on their own and figure it out and they realize it's a little bit more challenging than they thought, it's easy to give up and want Absolutely. someone else to do it for you. Right. And it's something that you're right. We have to teach our kids, you know, mm -hmm. early on about continuing to try, you know, yep. when things don't look like you think it's supposed to look, yep. don't give up. There's nothing wrong with you. Don't internalize it. Mm -hmm. you, it just means that it takes more effort than you're used yeah. to giving it. Yeah. And you have to keep applying yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to keep trying. Yep. And you learn how each, and, this, and you learn how your child learns. You have to right. learn their particular learning style. So I mm -hmm. knew with my daughter, I did one way. I did with my son a certain way. And, and that's how you raise, I feel, a child into a person that feels self-assured that won't necessarily fall into that spiral of something's wrong with me. You yeah. Know? Particularly yeah. when you deal with a special needs child, you mm -hmm. know, the world will tell them something's wrong with you mm -hmm. as opposed to you just see things in a, in a different way. And, right. is, and isn't it beautiful that we live in a world of variety? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So you, you turn the challenge into triumph. You know, mm -hmm. particularly when you have a child that's struggling in that area Absolutely. And, help, and help them learn the language. So it becomes a healthy habit for them as well throughout their lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that way they continue it. And when they make a mistake or they what they consider with a failure, they don't just throw in the towel and give up. Mm -hmm. And that starts early, like that habit of being intentional about, OK, I got to try again, got to try again. That has to be deeply ingrained in us mm -hmm. or we'll become adults who are just quick to throw in the towel and give up mm -hmm. because it's not ingrained in us. Like yeah. that, that habit of continuing yeah. to, to do more when you feel mm -hmm. like I can't do it is right. an important lesson to learn early on. Right. Right. You know, and, I, and that's that introspective that we've been talking about, you know, since we started that this, you know, we've had this opportunity since we've had this reset opportunity yeah to be introspective and figure out where does some of this stuff come from mm -hmm. you know, who am i how did i become this way this is not the blame game yeah this is really just an opportunity for us to figure out how do i develop a healthy habit mm -hmm. why haven't i developed this healthy habit you mm -hmm. know and what what can i do in my own internal thought processes to forgive forget, move on, whatever I need to do to once again, invest in, in myself enough to say that I can do it mm -hmm. and, and, and believe in yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I know we're getting ready to wrap up soon, but I think it's important to, and Sister Libu, you mentioned this, celebrate your successes. So any small triumphs is still a triumph. So mm -hmm. make sure that you're celebrating yep. the small steps that you're taking towards meeting your goal. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So even if you like, Oh my gosh, I went this whole week with no coffee. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm on what? What is this? Day, day four? No four, coffee? Day, I'm day dying, four. man. I want my coffee so <laughs> bad. I'm like, I'm like, I can't want my coffee so bad. But I'm so proud of myself for not giving in. Like, I so yeah. badly wanted to pour some creamer yeah. in my coffee. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm committed yeah. to this. I'm going to see yeah. it through. Yeah. Every day I wake up in the morning and get through the day. Yeah. It, without coffee, I'm like, I'm so proud of myself. I did it. I did That's it. That's good. That's I did excellent. it. Yeah, but I we got, we got <laughs> no coffee, no creamer, and <laughs> that's my like lifeline, right? But um, something, you, something you said, Sister Labu, is um, like, don't let. Like, never mind, I forgot. It was no, in, and right. I left it. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I just went back to your coffee. At me, I'm, I'm a black coffee drinker anyway. So this was that's oh no, how it for me. But I, but I will say, like you saw my husband go behind me back there, yeah. you know, because you know he's not quite doing the sugar thing this week. So he, he, he went out and got a water ice. He asked, "Do you want one?" I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> no, I don't want one. No, I don't want a water ice." <laughs> But yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. But it's in a, it's in a, so I will celebrate. You know what? That right. was one thing I said no to, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and celebrate that. And so, right. and celebrate that. So, yeah. Yep. Wow. I had, a, I had a client who said to me, um, like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to like 
encourage myself. And I said, yeah. that's because you haven't done it. Mm -hmm. You know, your yeah. habit is to think negatively. Yeah. So in order to overcome that, you have yeah. to be intentional about celebrating the small Absolutely. things and Absolutely. let that become a new habit. And even yeah. though it's difficult to do, you got to be intentional about doing mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. once we start to do that, it just it opens us up to mm -hmm. receive more because we're not closing ourselves off to shrinking mm -hmm. back into yeah. just the cycle of disappointment and shame and rejection mm -hmm. and failure, mm -hmm. because that is a rut we do not want to get stuck in. Right. There's there's right. no way to really accomplish great things mm -hmm. in that cycle of negativity and mm -hmm. pessimism and mm -hmm. and gloom and doom. Um, self-sabotaging thoughts like that. Those are the things we have to break away from in order to do that. You really got to be intentional about doing that. And, and develop yeah. that habit of, of, mm -hmm. of walking in self-assurance. You know, how many mm -hmm. times when somebody says, oh, you look nice, you go, oh, this old thing. Or you, you start talking <laughs> about, I got it on sale. Learn to just say thank you. Just say thank you. you. Mm-hmm. Learn, yeah. And if somebody says you look nice, but, you know, the, I always use this example. If you're all dressed up and say, oh, you look nice, but your shoes are ugly. You miss all the other stuff. You go, well, what's wrong with my shoes? Right. You miss all right. of that. So my challenge to all of us who are trying to develop new, healthier, and I'm going to help, just different habits, spend some time complimenting yourself. Oh, yeah. That's hard. That's, oh, Lord. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we, we we hit the nail on the head. Spend yeah. some time complimenting yourself this week. You owe it yeah. to yourself. You mm -hmm. owe it to yourself to do that. Absolutely, yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely. Compliment yourself. Give yourself grace. We talked a lot about a lot of things today. Celebrating your your accomplishments, changing your environment, um, working through those negative thoughts, showing gratitude. Right, yeah. um, are important steps in going in the right direction and establishing new and healthy habits, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, I had a great discussion today with wow. you, Sister Lizelle. We this made it. Really, we made it. It went really fast. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. So it listen, everybody, you know, thank you so much for joining us today. This is Mental Health Awareness Month, too. Please don't forget that we, our church has a counseling center and we are booming. Like we have I'm so proud of our counseling center and the fact that we have people actually all across New Jersey and um, that are a part of our counseling center that are coming down from all over. Wow. And so it's not just Bethany members. We have kind of our our doors have been open. The walls have mm -hmm. been expanded to seeing people that are not Bethany members, that are community members that are coming to the counseling center. Mm -hmm. So um, please give us a call. Um, I think we can put the number in, but if you want to reach out to the counseling center to discuss, to continue the discussion with one of our therapists, if you need help working through negative thinking or anxiety or depression, or you want to work on establishing uh, better habits, call the counseling center, talk to one of the therapists. Um, and our phone number is 856-782-6748. That's how you can reach someone at the counseling center. 856-782-6748. Or eight, if you want to reach the counseling center, and someone can uh, speak with you if you need to talk to someone during this mental health awareness month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yay. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank yeah. you, Deacon Lebu. Oh, We're praying for you. you all. Oh, we appreciate that. All right. I hope that you take. You guys got some uh, free therapy today. Okay. <laughs> All right, the next one will call you. This is good. Okay, it's Aww. and the number I just want to correct it seven eight two six seven four eight. Okay, six, so seven, that should eight. it should be six seven four eight. So mm -hmm. definitely make sure that you call the counseling center. But we would love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And all right, you guys, thank you so much. Have a great, wonderful mm -hmm. evening. Yes. And we'll remember, talk to you soon. Anyway, compliment yourself. Yes. Compliment, okay. make, make that a daily habit. Absolutely. Take care.